Welcome back. Recently I was looking over some old videos that I had made and realised that I'd never actually explained the Barometric Prognosticator 2 that I'd made several years ago because at the time when I made that video I was too shy to actually share my dulcet tones so it was just accompanied by music but I thought it was worth explaining because I was very pleased with it. It's one of my favourite steampunk creations. What happened was I was approached by someone who liked boating and wanted some sort of steampunk machine, weather station type thing, um, based, well, with a, with a nautical theme. I sketched all sorts of different ideas because I knew that I wanted it to have some way of communicating weather readings and also some sort of scene to represent the, uh, the current weather forecast. After much cogitation, rumination, etc, etc, I decided to have a clock at the top with a nice round thing in the round part, and then the main part of the body, which could house the scene, and then a base which started off much smaller. More on that later. I made the top bit from the wonderful, flexible um, MDF. 6mm MDF sheet which has lots and lots of cuts down one side which means you can bend it. So simply by cutting out a front and a back circular bit, gluing this flexible MDF around it, it really worked nicely and then I routed it afterwards to get the rounded bits. And then the clock movement fitted on perfectly, looked really nice with using self-adhesive lead strip to make it look, give the impression that it was stained glass. The clock enclosure I made using a shop bought clock because obviously they have the ability to injection mould beautiful twiddly enclosures which can then be spray painted, the face can be changed and they look wonderful. And the rest of the enclosure I made from 12mm thick MDF just glued but jointed at the corners. To finish the surface I applied wonderful self adhesive veneer it's great stuff because it sticks instantly. You have to press it down really hard, but it's permanent and then you can stain it, varnish it, whatever you want. But it looks lovely. As with normal standard barometers, I thought I would split the different weather forecasts up into five different categories from sunny to stormy or words to that effect. So come up with, I mean, this is the lovely thing about this sort of machine and design you provide yourself with really strict constraints. I didn't plan how I was going to do these scenes um, before I'd actually built the enclosure that they needed to fit into, which is lovely. After further thought, I realised that I could move. I wanted each scene to have two parts, the background and the foreground, with the cabin and the front of the boat and things. So in the end, I came up with a lovely solution, even though I say so myself, to enable both parts on each of the five scenes to move independently or to move together rather using these gears that stick out the side you can see how they work a uh, small stepper motor at the back five stepper motors in all with a gear that engages in the two parts of that particular scene and then each one is brought into view inside there's a limit switch so that the arduino knows when to stop them and how many steps to take to actually bring them into view that was very exciting and it's oh, just love the look of it. It looks fascinating, which I was really pleased with. Just two part weather scenes, you say? No, I wanted to have clouds to go up and down or the sun or whatever. So I came up with another step on motor at the top with a most complicated way of linking it to some chains that would actually pull up uh, five different uh, cloud formations, if you will from sun, which isn't a cloud, through to extremely cloudy and the stepper motor can move them up and down in the background to sit at the back of each scene. And then finally, just the thought of illuminating it, mainly the scenes are illuminated by two rows of the lovely self-adhesive LED strips at the front, warm white as always. And then during night time, um, these fade down, logarithmically I hasten to add, and a blue LED lights up with a little projected one, which I think came from my little pony toy thing that projected a 
pony on the wall or something but it had a lens and a nice bright LED so it was perfect and that's what projects the moon now onto the tide you can't have a boat scene without having water rising and lowering so I ended up cutting out some a tide some water with some waves at the top from a piece of opaque plastic there was actually a folder binder but it was a nice blue so I used that I supported it on a um, very fine chain each side and had the whole thing being able to be lifted or lowered by another stepper motor and this corresponded with some lots of googling and some cunning Arduino code so that it would rise and lower uh, corresponding to the local tide times I think it's six hours 20 minutes each cycle I seem to remember. And then, for further realism, uh, the tide sways from side to side with um, a little electromagnet that just knocks it every few seconds. And that looks really nice. I was so pleased to have sorted that out. So this scene incorporates all sorts of different elements. Well, the other thing with the waves, the tide, was that I had one of those little titchy little model helicopters that are still very popular that I'd managed to crash and smash to smithereens but I realised that it had a lovely little motor and some very f very small precise gears so I sprayed them brass and mounted them on the front with some more engraved labels and a little pointer and depending on which way the motor is driven by the Arduino through an H-bridge controller um, it actually indicates whether it's the ebb or the flow tide on to weather readings. Now, with lots more research, the wonderful Arduino, I found a library that would read with one of the little 433 megahertz radio receivers, I think I'm right in saying that, that connects to the Arduino. Um, it could read the values sent out by an external exterior, um, off the shelf, temperature and humidity sensor which was brilliant. Initially I started using wired sensors but thought oh, it would be so nice and it was possible. That is the wonder of Arduino, don't get me started. So having got the Arduino to read external well, humidity and external temperature, it's very easy then to get one of the other wonderful little Bosch I think make them, um, barometric, what am I trying to say, barometric pressure sensors accurate to two decimal places that connect to an Arduino with just power wires and two data wires absolutely incredible so now having got all this data being presented to the Arduino it was time to work out how to actually present it to a human being now temperature internal and external or interior exterior seemed to have a lovely idea would be to have two of these lead screws one either side that would move arms up and down Again, little stepper motor at the top, the wonderful BFY, blah, 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 whatever it is, I'll put it on the screen. Um, a limit switch at the bottom, so that whenever you switch it on for the first time, both pointers go right down to the bottom, touch the limit switch, and then the Arduino knows where it is, and can always remember then how, f how many um, steps to make it read to move to the position that it's required, if you like. And it's interesting to be able to see, compare the interior and exterior temperatures so visually onto barometric pressure. I decided to use the bellows from a cuckoo clock and the flute from a cuckoo clock connected to a tube so a bit like a swanny whistle and then having another stepper motor that would withdraw and push in change the position of a plunger within that swanny whistle and then the Arduino would calculate record all the barometric pressure readings calculate a weather forecast and then could play each hour or when required the 24 hours of pressure readings as a tune basically fitted into the notes from the lowest to the highest to indicate so you could hear whether the, um, the weather forecast whether, whether, whether the weather was getting better or worse and I'm thrilled and I've used that subsequently on the barometric prognosticator 3 and all sorts of other machines because it really is a nice unusual touch and it's lovely that it is actually a real sound it's not recorded digitally or anything else it is a proper flute that is working finally to humidity whilst it's not playing a tune the scotch yoke 
driving thing which has got a legend around the side indicating humidity moves to indicate the current humidity um, with a little pointer and a magnifying lens just to add a nice little touch so that is what it does that's what it displays along obviously with the time to control it all because of the enormous number of outputs and inputs and things I decided to use the Arduino Mega the standard Arduino Uno, well not standard, but Arduino Uno has about 15 to 20, I can never quite remember, something in that order of um, multi-purpose input outputs. Whereas the Arduino Mega has about 56, which is brilliant. It means that I could connect, that there's enough inputs and outputs for absolutely everything I require. And it was a joy to program, quite complicated because it had to do so many different things. And it was a huge learning curve for me, but I loved every minute of it. So satisfying when you've got a goal, you know what you want to achieve, and you just have to slowly refine it, refine it. And it's lovely. It's a bit like a game because you can keep testing it and seeing whether you've got it right that time. So I finally got it done. I was actually thrilled. Oh, and I needed to extend the base of it, obviously, because once I decided to have the musical thing, there wasn't room on the original base, so I had to sit it on a plinth. But again, that's lovely. It's nice because the uh, Victorians, with all their amazing inventions, they couldn't just put controls where they wanted to or where they'd look nice. They had so many mechanical constraints and practical constraints, and that's, that gives steampunk machinery the look, that sort of steampunk look, which is lovely. So having to add bits and fit bits in that you hadn't expected is a really valuable part of designing steampunk machines, which I love. Not planning it out to the nth degree beforehand, but starting at some point and just figuring things out and bolting things on as you go. Another extra bit I had to add, which I hadn't planned to, but was very pleased when I came up with the idea, was a PIR sensor, which would mean that if it didn't see anything, any movement for an hour, it would then switch off and shut down basically keep going in the background but save on all the mechanics and mechanisms motors etc and then the other lovely thing about having a PIR sensor is that when it first sees movement when you come back and it sees you move in front of it it can then start up and respond by moving and making noises and things like that it worked out really well but I didn't have anywhere to fix one because I just hadn't thought about it. So in the end, I came up with an idea again, a really nice sort of steampunk idea, where it just had to go on top. So I built an extra bit out of some plumbing pipe and fixed it on the top and was really pleased. Offset, and it just looked really nice, gave it a really nice look. And as with all self-respecting steampunk machines, you have to have some sort of boiler or obvious steam production device. So I decided to build a little boiler to go on the side at the bottom out of all sorts of scraps of plumbing pipe, plastic bits and pieces glued together. And it's always so exciting when you make that sort of thing, when you first get to spray it and see what it overall is going to look like. And then put the top coat on, which was metallic copper paint. It just looks gorgeous. I was so pleased with that. As always, thanks very much for watching, if you still are. If you have any questions or queries, I'm always pleased to answer them in the comments. And I hopefully this will help inspire and support people to create their own amazing steampunk creations. Please, if you have enjoyed this, please remember to click subscribe and the bell or something rather like that. Thanks again. Hope to see you next time.